Ambassador Rick Rennell, thanks for being with us on uh, CBN News. You're here in Jerusalem. Tell us why. Well, I'm here for CPAC Israel, mm -hmm. which is an incredible, incredible opportunity for conservatives from America to come over, meet with conservatives from Israel, and talk about the world today. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, quite a bit. Uh, did you find common common uh, ground between those here in Israel and in the U.S.? I think so. I think there's a frustration that uh, we're, we, for 20 years, kind of sat by and watched our institutions fade away. And, and I speak you know, pretty openly about the fact that I think conservatives are, are to blame in some ways. I mean, why is it that our schools are such a mess? Why is it that our universities are such a mess? Uh, we could see this coming little by little. The Chinese are uh, investing in our universities and, and we've just allowed the, the woke mob left to take over our public schools and to take over our universities. We gotta fight back. Mm -hmm. we, we've got to be able to realize that the Reagan admonishment that every generation has to fight for their freedom is true. Mm -hmm. When this, you know, gone is the day that uh, you can tune in to CBN and watch programs and hope that somebody else is doing something. Mm -hmm. You have to watch and be armed and you have to uh, decide that you're, you're gonna fight for our country. We need every hand on deck, so to speak. Mm. Is that the way to fight back? You could be on the, be in the <clears throat> battleground, sort of in the, in the, in the schools, in the, uh, on the media? Yeah, look, you know, growing up, what I learned is, is like a family, everybody has a different role to play, right? Uh, the church has a role to play. Um, the body of Christ has a role to play and everybody has a different talent. Um, I would say some people are really good at social media. Some people have the ability to write checks. Some people have the ability to speak or run for office. I think a little bit of everything. Whatever your talent is, you got, you got to come in and help save this country. I mean, look, the reality, I'm, I'm a pretty positive person, but the reality is that every great civilization has lasted roughly 250 years. We have to fight back against the mm -hmm. left. And I, I would say we have to destroy the ideology. We can't somehow... Uh, negotiate with it. It's anti-American in many ways. Mm, yeah. And you said this was a, one of the largest CPAC meetings uh, here in Israel? It's the first CPAC Israel, mm -hmm. and it was just wildly successful. And so I've encouraged my friend Matt Schlapp, who runs CPAC, to uh, think about some other international sites. Mm -hmm. Where else should conservatives be motivated? Yeah. Well, it's the fountainhead of Judeo-Christian civilization right here in Jerusalem. Oh, it's amazing to be here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, foreign policy, you're the former uh, ambassador to Germany, former head of the DIA, uh, and just J President Joe Biden just came here to Israel and to Saudi Arabia. What's your analysis of what his trip uh, meant? I think he survived being in Israel. I think it was, uh, you know, pretty average. Uh, certainly didn't help push any issue forward. But his time in Saudi Arabia, I think, was a disaster. I mean, he, he looked like he was begging. Um, he had really tried to ostracize the Saudis in many ways uh, and then, you know, with high gas prices realizing, okay, maybe I need them. His strategy and his vision are terrible and it looked like it, right? He, he went to Saudi Arabia begging and the United States should never be in a position like that. Mm. You were part of the Trump administration when they established the uh, Abraham Accords. Did his visit help or hinder the Abraham Accords? You know, I think there's a recognition from the left that the Abraham Accords have been amazing. Uh, I think they realize that um, they may not call them by the Abraham Accords, but they're realizing that their whole mantra that Donald Trump and Republicans uh, can't be elected because they're going to start wars was wrong. Not only did Donald Trump not start wars, he actually brought us peace agreements. And so the opposite is true of what we've been hearing from Democrats. And I think they're the ones who have sat by and watched a war in Ukraine. I, as former U.S. Ambassador to Germany, have been very clear that the Trump sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline were really good in controlling Putin. And the Biden administration and Senate Democrats dropped those sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And shortly thereafter, we saw a war in Ukraine. Mm. So I don't think that it is too much of a stretch to say that the strategy that the Democrats put forward uh, really has caused this war in Ukraine, and we should be very clear about it.
And how about the Middle East? Right now, even though President Biden said he won't allow a nuclear Iran, it seems like Israel and some of these Sunni Arab nations aren't necessarily sure that that's true. Yeah, it's a, the difference between a credible threat of military action and a threat of military action. And I don't think Joe Biden has that credibility behind him, and therefore we're seeing all sorts of problems. I am pretty clear in my speaking that the opposite of America first is consensus with the Europeans. And that's where we are. Joe Biden has decided that the European agreement with us, the clapping of the European crowd, uh, the, the approval of the European governments is his goal. And so what he's trying to do is to say, what do you want, what do you need? But uh, that's a dangerous path for America for one simple reason. We don't share the same threat assessment that the Europeans do. America is gonna be targeted by Iran. America is gonna be targeted by terrorist groups. And that's not always true for the Europeans. Now, certainly the ones who stand strong with the West, but I've been around Germans enough and German government officials to know they don't feel the same threat that we do when it comes to Iran or terrorist groups. Mm -hmm. You said President Trump was strong and brought peace and President Biden may appear weak. And is it possible this could be leading to a potential war here in the Middle East? Uh, I hope not. I pray every day that, uh, that, that we have peace. I'm a diplomat. I've worked at the State Department for 12 years. I think if you want to avoid war, you have to have tough diplomacy. You can't mock diplomats who are on the front line being tough. And you have to have creative diplomacy. And so I tend to try to stay in my lane of talking about whenever there's a problem, uh, how do we do it diplomatically? How do we solve it diplomatically? I, I know it helps me as a diplomat to have the Pentagon behind me because they don't negotiate. I do, and the State Department does. And so when I was in the government, uh, that's what, what my focus is. Now I'm out of the government, I'm in the private sector, and I'm enjoying life. Okay. <laughs> and looking forward, what do you see dynamically here in the Middle East now that you're in Jerusalem? Well, I think we've got to build upon the peace accords. We've got to realize that as the Americans begin to have more uh, of their own energy, as we become energy independent of the Middle East, uh, the Middle East oil and Arab nations are gonna become uh, less of a crisis for America. And I think we've got to be able to be very clear about that path and work towards it. Mm -hmm. And have we made a mistake, we meaning the United States, by being in energy dependent now, as opposed to being energy independent? Sure, of course, it's dangerous, it uh, makes us less safe, and certainly makes us dependent upon an, a region like this that is uh, not always rational, not always uh, seeking human rights uh, values, not for capitalism, not for democracy. Um, and we've got to understand that if we're going to be dealing with uh, governments in this region that don't share our values, we can, could, we can never be in a position of having to rely upon them for energy. Okay, Ambassador Rick Grinnell, great to be with you. Thanks so much.